once again thank you for tuning in and if it's your first time here my name is Chandra and I hope this message blesses you or somebody out there and today's topic is God gives you what you prepare for not what you ask for so my father wants me to come here and talk about promises that he gives us as long as they align with his will for our lives because he doesn't want to give us something that will become a distraction to our ministry to our life or anything that he has planned for us majority of people out there especially men they don't know they genuinely wholeheartedly don't know how to receive prayers most men they don't know how to receive prayers and consequently they lose their faith that's why sometimes God send them a helpmate, which is a woman to intercede for them. Because most women, they have faith. But most men, they easily lose faith. Because the thing is, sometimes when you ask for a reality, like God give me a house, God is not going to give you that first. Because he gives you what you prepare for, not what you're asking for. Because God doesn't want to give you something that is going to be all about you. He wants to give you something that you can use to reach out his people for him. God is not going to give you something, the very, very thing that's going to isolate you from your assignment. Let's say, for example, me as a woman, I say, God, give me a husband. If God looks at my heart and sees idolatry, he can see that she's going to make that man an idol. God is not going to give me that man. He will know that I don't qualify for that good man because I'm not a good thing. I won't be a good thing to him because the Bible tells us in Proverbs 18.22 that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. And the thing is, the Lord will not honor that prayer at that time. It doesn't mean that he will never honor it. At that time, he, would, he wouldn't honor it because his promises are aligned with his will. And if I'm outside his will, because he knows that what I'm asking is going to distract me from my ministry, from my assignment, he will give me something else instead. Not that he will never honor that prayer. He will always give you the desires of your of your heart at the right time because everything with God it's right timing and there's a season for everything and do you know how many Christians out there prayed for something received it and after they got everything that they asked for they turn away from God some of them they stop their ministry some of them they stop going to church because they feel like what they, ask for, what they ask from God, they got it. But majority of them, they don't understand that. What they got, it wasn't God. What they got, it wasn't God who gave it to them. It's the enemy that gave it to them so that he can seduce them out of the assignment. He, they think that it is God, but God will never do that. He will never give you the very same thing that will distract you from his will for your life. The same thing that will destroy you. He knows when it's the right time to bless you. And he knows when it's the right time, when it's the season for that. And sometimes what God will do, instead of sending you that husband or whatever you're looking for, he will send you a person first. Maybe that person could be like a mentor or that person could be like a pastor because there's something that he wants you to learn. Maybe because he knows, because God knows that if you say you're looking for a husband, he wants you to submit up under somebody because he knows that husband is the head of the family. So a wife has to come and submit to him. And what he will do, he will bring somebody first and see if you can submit to that person, like a pastor or a mentor or somebody that could help you. And majority of Christians, they fail that test. They fail that test because nobody wants to be responsible. People don't want to be accountable. People just want to do the bare minimum. Then after they've done the bare minimum, they want, they expect to receive from him, 
from him. But the very thing, but God knows that. He can't give you the very thing that is keeping you from knowing him. And what when he brings this mentor or a pastor in your life, he wants you to pass that test. The plan is for that person to prune you, to weed out anything that he feels that you don't need to go into the next chapter of your life. Like maybe say, for example, you're the kind of person that never had a father figure in your life. And when he brings that person, he wants to see, will you be able to accept authority, submit? Will be able to be that good thing that I've prepared you to be? But most of the people, because of the laziness and all the things that I've said before, they miss the test and they end up sending the, the blessing back to sender, to God because of laziness, because they don't want to take responsibility. And the next thing, what they will do, they will keep, they don't know that they are delaying themselves. They will keep on complaining. They keep on crying. They keep on saying, why God, why me? But when God was, had a process, put a process in place for them, they didn't see it because they expect everything to be the way they want it to be. But I'm here to tell you that God is not going to feed into your understanding. He's not going to do things the way you expect him to do them. He's going to do things according to his will for your life and what he thinks is best for you. That's why you have to be careful. When he sends you to a place, you have to be mindful. If he brings like mentors, because the Bible even tells us that there's safety in the multitude of counsel. Safety, those are counsel. Counsel is people that you can trust, people that you can come to, and you just have to humble yourself. Majority of people, they don't want to humble themselves. But blessed, but the Bible tells us that blessed are the meek. You know? And you have to humble yourself. Anybody that comes to your life, there's always a plan and there's always a purpose. But majority of people, they miss it. They miss it. Don't and and the other thing that I've noticed also is that when God sent them these people, because it's not what they expected, then they start becoming familiar with them. Don't ever get familiar with a man of God to a point where you think you can disrespect them or despise them, because the anointing in their life. It's not going to work for you. So sometimes, because people, they don't know how to have relational relationships. It's all about them. They worship their emotions. They get offended easily. It's like all about them, 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 them. And it's all, always the feelings over the assignment. When God brings these people in their lives, they don't know how to humble themselves and become students and learn from them. They end up disrespecting the anointing that is supposed to work in your life. They end up despising and disrespecting the destiny helpers. They end up disrespecting people that were coming to prune them, to weed the bad things out of them, to prepare them for what God has planned for them. It's scriptural. It's not something that I'm making up. Even before Jesus came into this world, God sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for him. Every time a prophet comes, God will send another, somebody to prepare a way for that prophet. And a typical example is the one that I've just said, Jesus and John the Baptist. Sometimes you are praying for what you're praying, or sometimes God it's not going to answer your prayer straight away because what you pray for is too heavy for you at that time. And when God looks at you in the realms of the spirit, your hands are broken in the realms of the spirit. And God knows that whatever you're praying for is going to be too heavy for you. And what you will do, he knows that if he gives it to you now, 
you're either gonna abuse it, you're gonna crush it, you're gonna drop it, or you're gonna cause damage to it. Then what he will do, he won't give it to you at that time. Because that time, he will send somebody to prepare you so that you can go through that healing process first before you can receive that. And if you're not careful, you will despise and you disrespect the thing that God has sent to prepare you for what you've been praying for. And it happens with lots of people. you got to believe God from it, from your heart. If God said, I'm going to give you a wife or a husband, you have to believe him from your heart. And when you believe God, that's when you sow back and that's when you can, you can sit back and say to him, God, God is going to bless me with this and you believe it with all your heart. Because God is going to use, he's going to use those people. He's going to bless you with those people. And he's going to use those people because before God can bless anybody, he sends a man. And even the enemy, if he wants to destroy you, he sends a man in your life. And as long as you believe with your heart that God said he's going to bring me, he's going to bless me with this. I have to humble myself, believe it with all my heart, and hold on to his word. It's going to come to pass. And when you see people come into your life, don't just, just overlook at them or despise them, maybe the way they look. You might, do, maybe those are the people that God has to bring first. Maybe you might, might be the people that he needs you to have intercessors in your life because he knows that. You are surrounded with so much danger. And for you to receive that, you have to be among those people who can intercede for you. But because you feel some kind of way, you're disrespecting the anointing upon their lives. They don't look the way you expect them to look. Then when you do, you send back your blessing back to sender. Cause delay to your life. Now you're complaining. You're crying. Two years pass. Three years passed. God, you promised me I was going to get this. You promised me, look at my clock. I'm getting old. You said I'm going to get married. Where is my husband? When will I get him? But how can God give you a husband where you're not going to be a good friend to him? You're still broken. You need to heal. You need to mature in the sense of God. You need to be serious with your assignment. You need to focus you need to be focused because God doesn't want to give you the very same thing that will pull you away from him, a destruction. He wants to give you that man at the right time when he feels that you are ready. When he knows that you're not going to make an idol out of him. But because of ourselves, we cause delays in our lives and we always think that God is not there. You have to believe that if God tells you he's going to give you something, start preparing for it. Start becoming a better person. If it means going to therapy because maybe you've faced so much trauma and hurt throughout your life, do therapy. Because sometimes therapy really do help. You realize that even though you read the Bible, you have the power of the Holy Spirit, there are th some things that needed to be dealt with. So they can come out of, out of your system. It's the same thing. When you get sick nowadays, the fact, even though you pray to God to help you, you still go to the hospital to see, to find the doctors, the professionals, to help you with whatever you're sick of or what you think might be the problem. And the same thing works with therapy. Sometimes if you've gone through trauma, maybe had breakups, death, loss of a loved one, divorce, those kind of things, sometimes you need to go to therapy because those professionals, they might get to the root of your problem that you might think that you are not aware of. But if you think that you don't need that, that's how people become broken and bitter and they act out of their character or they hear all these evil voices that makes them to act in a crazy way and they believe it's God. 
when God will never tell you anything that is contrary to his word because he loves you with all his heart you have to understand that God say that to yourself you say you're gonna give me this I'm happy I'm preparing for it and it's gonna be evident and when you do that you believe that with all your heart that is going to be evident in the decision that you make today if god promised you he's going to give you that wife or husband you won't go around dating everybody you won't go around doing all things that everybody in the world do you will prepare you will prepare yourself and if you listen to his voice he will tell you when to go bring these people to prepare you then by the time the time comes everything will fall into place at the right time. Because with him, it's all about timing and alignment. And it's all about fulfilling your purpose. He doesn't want to bring somebody that's going to drag you, take you out of his will, seduce you out of your will, and later you end up in divorce. He doesn't want that. He wants every lay, he values. God values relationships. If you go back to the book of Genesis, when God, Adam and Eve and everything, he gave you Eve, there's all these promises. Even Noah, after, after the flood, he always say, uh, grow and multiply. Everything, because God values family. He knows that when there's a good structure in a family, husband and wife, they'll be able to raise children and they can multiply. But if you look at what is happening in the world, because of so many broken homes, kids are raised by spirit of rejection. They feel rejected by both the parent or the parent that left or the parent that is home and frustrated. They feel rejected. And majority of children, they, they are raised by that spirit of rejection, which can cause so many insecurities. But God doesn't want that. He will never give you anything that is bad for you. So I'm here to tell you that God always gives you what you prepare for, not what you ask for. Because he doesn't want to give you something that will become destruction and pull you away from his, from his way. So I hope you've been blessed by this message. And if you have, please like and share, subscribe to my channel. And thank you, thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Amen.